How does a whole year of free fuel sound? Or how about no home energy bills? We live in a four bedroom detached house, 140 square meters, and hopefully we have no energy bill. Despite this ridiculous heat soak on the back of our house, floor to ceiling, double glazed, 20 year old glazing. This bit's not so bad. This little section is just over two meters, but at least it's triple glazed. So if you wanna follow my example and set your goal for 2026 to be a zero bill overall for all of your energy and fuel consumption, then make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss content that will help you get there. In 2024, I sort of achieved a zero bill, I sort of cheated a little bit as well. So for 2025, I wanted to do it properly, including the standing charges, all of our transportation costs, all of the heating, all of the hot water, all electricity, all included. When we moved into this place, Ovo told us that the previous owners spent 3,700 pounds per year on gas and electricity. On top of that, we always spent around 2,000 pounds of diesel as well. We weren't very impressed by the thought of spending five to six thousand pounds on fuel for our home and for our car. So we did a few things to resolve that. We put that insulated roof up on top of the conservatory. We also put a load more insulation in the loft. We fitted that heat pump and we filled that roof with solar panels. 16 on this side facing northwest, six on the other side facing southeast. And coming for 2026, we're also gonna be connecting these six solar panels up to the house as well. Okay, so how did we do? The goal was zero bill overall, including everything, no cheating, no fudging the numbers. Let's get to the computer. I got some spreadsheets and I got some charts for you. And if you're not into seeing the actual data, just fast forward about 10 minutes and you can just jump to the conclusion. I won't begrudge you that. I know it can get boring. Not everyone's really into the geeky data, but if you wanna follow along for every single number, then stay tuned and make sure you subscribe. Right, that was absolutely freezing. I'm so glad we got a heat pump and it's cozy and warm to show you the next bit. Let's run you through the things that I think are important that you know, and also answer all the questions that you've been asking me all year. So this just demonstrates how much electricity we've exported to the grid. On the left, that's in pounds and pence, 918 pounds, 81 pence. And you can see how many kilowatt hours on the right. And that is done through the Octopus outgoing tariff. They pay us 15 pence per kilowatt hour. A quick reminder, we've got 22 panels. Go back and watch some previous videos if you want all the nitty gritty detail. I've added battery storage. I've got a Sunsync 8.8 .8 kilowatt inverter. I've got a Valent 7 kilowatt heat pump. We've got electric cars, etc., etc. Some people will consider it excessive. Others would look at this as incredibly good value and an excellent investment in a home that you live in. Here you can see how bad the export was for the last quarter of the year. This is October, November, December, and they weren't paying us a lot and we were not exporting a lot. Moving on to the imports, how much we actually drew from the grid. And if my fat head has not got a better place to go, you can clearly see how we ramped up the consumption and the energy that was needed for our heat pump. And if you're not familiar with Octopus and their tariffs, then I suggest you go and have a look. I'll have a link in a second for you. But down on the bottom in the app, you can see that the stripey bars at the bottom, that's just the stand in charge. We can't do anything about that. It's 40 something P per day. The light pink bars are the off peak uh, rate, which for me is seven pence per kilowatt hour. I'm on the intelligent go tariff and the dark pink part of the bar is the peak rate. And those peak bars were often free energy sessions where I consumed energy and then I got the credit afterwards. So you can see I got a seven pound credit in October, two pound and then two pound again in November and December. If you are interested, then use my link below. You get 50 pounds, I get 50 pounds. And I highly recommend Octopus. Their customer service is excellent. Their tariffs are very competitive. And I save an absolute fortune by using the Octopus Intelligent Go tariff. Here in the blue bars, you can see what we were forecasted to generate through our solar panels. And then on the orange bars is what we did in the year of 2024. And then in the purple bars, record breaking month in 20 record breaking year in 2025 every single month we were up compared to 2024 so i am obviously over the moon with the performance of the solar panel system and as always 
look in the description. It was Dorset Solar Solutions who installed my system. I'm here in Southampton. Highly recommend them. Great value for money and excellent workmanship and customer service. As I get asked all the time, why did I put Northwest panels on? Hopefully this slide goes to demonstrate why Northwest facing panels were so essential for me with my awkward roof. Without those purple bars of Northwest generation, I would be really severely limited in how much solar energy I could produce on my own property. So Northwest, in my case, a big thumbs up and you can see how the profiles slightly change over the year in the winter months then the gap between the generation between my northwest and southeast arrays closes and in the summer months the northwest really overproduces. is this a good visualization for you you can see that 73 percent of my solar panel surface area is on my northwest roof and 68% of the production is from the Northwest roof. So you can see this a relatively small penalty over the course of the whole entire year because most of the solar panel generation is actually in the summer months and it doesn't really matter what your orientation is because the sun is so high in the sky. I'm not going to talk you through all of the figures you can pause you can analyze these you can figure out your own conclusion and you can let me know in the comments as always. This is a per panel production breakdown. So the Northwest panels, each one of them this year, produce 364 kilowatt hours. And the Southeast panels, each one of those produce 447 kilowatt hours. Okay, here's the export profile. You can see that the export difference between 2024 and 2025, very, very similar. And it follows a similar trend line to the generation itself. Now, interestingly, I installed some home storage batteries in, in the later months. I didn't have them in the earlier part of the year. And I thought that was going to drastically affect my export because I would be feeding all that excess energy into the batteries. It didn't really turn out that way. Not yet. So we'll see how we go through the course of 2026 because that will be the first year first full year of having home storage battery and once again the import profile tells a little bit of a story you can see the purple bars are the 2024 import and you can see the month that we got an ev at home permanently 384 kilowatt hours was a big jump up from the 177 in august and that was all because of the ev and the additional consumption there you can see that our orange bars are now considerably higher. Now, what I'm worried about is the fact that we have so much free energy that we end up just using a lot more. That goes for running the house a lot warmer, running the heat pump a bit harder, and doing a lot more driving and a lot more miles in the car because we know, A, it's, it's financially not a challenge or not something to consider anymore, but also we know that it's not as environmentally negative because of the kind of strategy we have to mitigate our carbon footprint i guess um let me know what you think have you observed this phenomenon i think that this is unfortunately something that we need to mentally tackle i think here in our home these show the contrast in uh, profiles between export versus import and you can see how the export really dropped off um and yeah a little bit due to the battery storage but obviously the import so what we were trying to do was send so much exported energy to the grid that that would then cover us the bills in the winter and overall over the course of the year we would spend zero on our energy bills that one's in kilowatt hours and this one is in pounds and pence and if you're really interested pause and you can analyze it this is a heat pump consumption people ask me about this all the time the small little bars are the electrical consumption that the energy that is consumed to power the heat pump and then because the heat pump can multiply that by using the energy from the air outside and pumping that inside the house you can see how much it produced and you can see that we are using more electricity this year in some cases considerably more energy but we are also producing a lot more energy so the overall efficiency of the heat pump it's roughly the same there's not a huge difference there but we're just keeping the house a lot warmer and also for longer periods i have i am running a bit of an experiment for over the last month now of just leaving the house constantly at 20 to 20 degrees on manual no timers no setback nothing else 
Let me know what you think about that. Would you like a full dedicated video of my experiment and my findings? Here's the heat pump costs and the blue bars are the electrical consumption. And then the financial cost is in those purple bars. As you can see, combination of smart tariffs and now home storage batteries as well makes running the heat pump extremely cost effective. This chart is generated by my Wallbox uh, EV charger, which has been fantastic for us over the last year and a bit. And uh, it goes to show we did way too much driving in November. It has been a year of doing way more traveling and a lot more mileage than either of us have anticipated. We don't tend to do a lot of driving for work anymore. Um, both of us are very fortunate with our work situation, but it seems like we were doing a lot of driving for everything else. Here's a few more data points from the Wallbox charger. And if I could move my big head out of the way, you could see in total, we use quite a lot of energy for the EV and all of that, as far as I know, was charging on a cheap rate overnight. I don't think there was a time that we used any solar energy to charge. I don't think there was any time where we used any peak rate. And uh, as you can see, it was £250 for all of that charging. These charts are generated by my Tigo optimizers. Long time viewers will know that the six panels on the front of the house facing southeast, that they have uh, power optimizers on them because I have a shading issue. I might a little thing here you might see a time lapse right now the light green bars shows how much extra energy is being reclaimed by the power optimizers let me know what your conclusion is do you think power optimizers are worth it or do you think that the bypass diodes built into the solar panels are sufficient so did we have a net zero bill in 2025 what's the conclusion of all of this figure all of these figures and all of this data what do you think where are we going with this? The total bill for 2025 is not a net zero bill. It is not a negative bill. I ended up paying Octopus Energy £93.20 for the whole year of 2025 for our EV travel, which I think when I calculated it, it was about 16,000 miles in total. All of our home heating, which we kept very nice and warm 24-7. And a family of five, all the other electrical consumption that comes with that. What do you think? Is that pretty good? We are ultimately talking about an energy bill of £7.77 per month. As you can see, the breakdown of what was charged by Octopus, what was uh, the export credit, and then what was credit for the free sessions. So 2026, we need to make it a little bit better. And one of the ways that we can do that is really what we've done already, I think is probably enough to get us to a zero bill. Just because if we look at January here, you can see £209 it cost us in January and December cost us £97 and the energy consumed was almost the same. The difference between those two months is just home storage battery. We were on the same energy tariff. We had the same solar panels, same heat pump, everything else. We had EV for all our transport, but the difference is just the home storage battery. So if we're saving over £100, per winter month, then I think we're going to get ourselves over the line of a completely net zero energy bill. But here's my goal for 2026. Anyway, we're going to connect the solar panels from the shed roof to the house permanently. And we've pretty much already done that from the beginning of January. I've connected that into one of my EcoFlow stream units so that we can start monitoring that extra power production that is coming from the shed roof. That's an extra three kilowatts potentially. I want to double the battery storage capacity, not because there's any financial benefit in doing it. The sweet spot for our energy consumption is probably 15 to 20 kilowatt hours. That will see us the best return on investment. Um, but in some ways, it's just a comfort thing. And uh, also, there's a few things that I want to toy with this year. And I want to experiment with two different battery systems. I want to see some of the challenges that constantly repeated in my comments below. What else is next? Um, we now have a vehicle also that has vehicle to load capability. I haven't yet released a video about that, but that will be coming very soon to you. There is a way that that vehicle to load can actually be wired into my SunSync inverter. And we could, in theory, have our new leap motor power in our home as well. 
stay tuned anyway plans and uh options for 2026 and if you haven't noticed we also nudged over 20,000 subscribers so thank you to everyone that has subscribed it is very much appreciated we're still well on track for the return on our investment and then some really i am extremely pleased with the value that we're already getting from our solar panel and battery system and i would wholeheartedly recommend it to anyone the future of energy supply is volatile and the more that we can do to gain our own independence we're just going to be winning and thank you as always to my channel members it's very generous of you to subscribe to this monthly and there's been a lot more of you that have joined us recently so thank you very much uh, i think we are now up over 70 channel members lots of new additions and a few old faces who have come back to join us and subscribe to the in channel members i very much appreciate your generosity and your continued support it very much helps as we continue thank you for watching i know that was a long one if you made it to the end you deserve a waffle so go and treat yourself i know it's new years it's probably most of you out there are on some new diet but have a waffle on me anyway take care like comment subscribe all that stuff goodbye